Well, we're going to take a look today here at Copper Gardens at uh, a couple of copper sconces with a bit of an interesting backstory. Uh, they look like I might have just completed them, and I did about 20 years ago. I'm probably a little bit less, but a good number of years ago, high teens, no doubt. A client that we have done a, a few jobs for, and they've become friends as <laughs> as as well as clients, brought them up because they had darkened considerably. And the reason I'm pointing this out and making it a public video is pointing out one of my learning curves and one of my errors in creating these. Back in this period, I was sandblasting a lot of my pieces, and there's a good reason for that and a bad reason for that. The good reason is that it puts tooth, a lot of uh, uh, um, granular effect on the surface of the metal, and increases the amount of surface area and gives it some bite, uh, hence the term tooth. And doing that allows the color to be more predictable and to stick better and to, to allow you to take it where you want to go. If you don't do that, you get some more radical changes in the final color than you might want. But what I learned, and it took some time, and this was one of the examples, that the piece would turn very, very dark over time, almost a, a little short of black, but a real deep um, bronzy brown tone that in some cases really wasn't a problem. Some clients just said, well, okay, that's copper doing his thing, and that's true. And in other cases, and this is a, probably the best example, because they're, on a, they're in a situation on a back uh, patio area that is just <laughs> gorgeous, and the amount of time and trouble that they went to make this place gorgeous matters. So things you put on the wall, th these are sconce covers, let me pick this up, that hang over the lights that are built into the pilasters of the, um, uh, the cover. What? Oh, I can't say the right word. The covering of their patio area. So they brought them up. We sat down and talked and had lunch and tried to figure out what to do and tried something while they were here. I was, uh, they drove a couple of hours, so I tried to do something in a short amount of time, and we changed it a lot. We brought the black back to green, but it also had a tremendous amount of yellow in it, and that's not common. I don't get much yellow, and I'm not sure why I did. Now, the oddity of this thing is that while they sat here for a couple of days, that's now been two days ago, two and a half, three days ago, the color has still changed, and I haven't done a thing. I haven't touched them. No water, no rain, no a little bit of warmth in the shop. It's been a couple of warm days, and I've been away. But we're not sure why. I'm not sure why that is. Here's a good bit of yellow right down here. Let me see. Yeah, I think that's coming out. Let me move in a little bit. And then the green tone we're looking for is more up in this range right up in here. So we actually changed, some of these areas were large, this was, which is now a little yellow, was actually very yellow. So I wish I knew why. The, pro the problem with being the copper guy is you'd think I'd be the guy that would know this stuff. The chemistry of it, I've never been good at. I know there are people out there who are much better than I, but the reason I'm po posting this partly for that client to see what we're doing and what the next steps might bring us, but also the, the, the few that look at my stuff and have some interest in color and what it takes to do this stuff, um, it, this might be interesting to a few. So that's the purpose for this, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't go on too long. Looks like we did about, oh, just about four minutes. So, all right, talk to you the next trip. Thanks. Bye-bye.